Hi guys, this is uh, Dr. Chris from Precision and Movement. Uh, this is Xavier. Um, so today we want to talk about uh, basketball injuries as they pertain to back pain during basketball. So some of the common injuries that we see or personally have experienced during uh, basketball as it pertains to back injuries have been either central low back pain, so joint pain, or any muscle overuse or paraspinal pain. So first thing I wanted to do is talk about some of the movements uh, during basketball that might expose you or risk you to some of these injuries. So the first movement that we're going to look at is <clears throat> whether you're going up for a rebound or say you're rotating or twisting, um, if you don't have enough range in the back or your lumbar spine, then you're going to be compressing the joint. So for Xavier, say if he's standing, going up for a rebound, jumping, and he lands with his back in this extended position here, he's going to put himself more at risk to compress these joints right here. The second motion is going to be more of a rotational movement. Say if Xavier has the ball and he's rotating, pivoting, and he's putting a lot of stress on the joint, and he doesn't have that mobility, then he's going to be compressing his facets, which in turn can uh, pinch the nerves and cause back pain. So the other uh, tissue source, or um, I guess you could say area where you can have pain is more the paraspinal or the muscle pain back here. So same thing if Xavier is jumping up for a rebound, and he either rounds a lot through his back here, then he's gonna put a lot of stress through his back, and then these muscles here are gonna to try to make up for that weakness elsewhere, and then you're gonna start experiencing back pain there, okay? So what I wanna go through first is looking at what kind of treatments uh, we can do to try to either increase mobility or provide stability around other areas to take pressure off of the back. I uh, wanna kinda of address the joint mobility issue. So a lot of times if we are tight in our hip flexors or the muscles that are in the front of our thigh, that'll tend to pull our pelvis forward. So it actually causes us, turn the other way for me, causes the pelvis to get pulled forward here and that puts us in a more of a relative position of extension or like compression right here. So in order to kind of help address this and kind of normalize this a little bit, we're gonna work on releasing some of the hip flexors or stretching the hip flexors. So we're gonna have Xavier here, use the foam roller here so what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and lay on the floor, kind of line the foam roller up on your thigh right here. And then as we're rolling, we're trying to go kind of from the top of the hip bone down just to right above the knee, not on the kneecap. And so what we're trying to do there is we're trying to work along the whole uh, length of the muscle. So part of it, we're rolling the quads, but also we're rolling kind of the hip flexor above. And by doing this, we're trying to help release some of that tension or that pulling that we're getting in the front of the pelvis and ultimately reducing some of the compression we're getting in the back over here. So for this, um, generally, if you're trying to roll or stretch, want to get about one minute, try to do a total of about four to five minutes throughout the day to kind of actually get a permanent change in the muscle length. Um, the other option that we have in addition to foam rolling would be just the hip flexor stretch. So I'm going to have Xavier kind of go into a half kneel so same thing, I want you to copy me right here. So with this one, it's really important to make sure that you're bracing your core, squeezing your glutes so that kind of locks your pelvis in, so it's not letting it cheat or rock back and forth. And just by doing those two things, you should feel a little bit of a tug kind of in the front hip area here. So once you got those locked in place, again, you're gonna kind of shift forward, try to make sure that your body's nice and straight, you're not arching your back or excessively flexing your back, keeping that engaged. Same thing, you're probably gonna feel more of a stretch on the front of the thigh. And same thing, you wanna go for about a minute, do about four or five times of stretching throughout the day so that you can get some tissue changes there. Now the second stretch that we wanna work on is to add uh, or to facilitate more lumbar rotation. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna have Xavier lay on the side, on the floor right here. So he's gonna have the bottom leg bent, top leg kinda of crossed up and over. And he's at a pull right here. So what we're doing is kind of addressing multiple things. So one, we're addressing the lumbar rotation right here. We're also addressing some of the quad and hip flexor muscle like right here. And we're just getting the pack stretch over here. So we're kind of getting multiple areas of stretching, um, but same rule, I want to go for about a minute, about four to five times uh, throughout the day. And this will hopefully help get a little bit more rotation there. Now, another one that's purely for just lumbar rotation. So go ahead and let this one go here. So now still stay on your side there. Hands together, head together there. And then we'll bring this one just a little lower here and here. Bend it there. So now what Xavier's gonna do is he's gonna kind of reach up towards the ceiling and kind of reach behind, follow his hand with his head and breathe out as he stretches back. So again, we're just trying to isolate the lower back here. Go again. And for this one, 
it might be a good idea just to do reps of these right here, just to kind of go in and out of the motion. Go again. And then breathe out as you go. And oftentimes you might get a little cavitation, a little pop, just like cracking the knuckle. That's fine. Um, bring it back. Um, and so this would be another good stretch just to help get a little more rotational mobility movement so that you reduce the pressure on your back as you're playing basketball. Oh, now, the other uh, injury that we've mentioned uh, as far as it pertains to back pain in basketball is kind of like muscle overuse or paraspinal strain. So oftentimes when we're overusing these muscles that like we mentioned, you're either rounding or flexing too much, and then these guys end up taking more of the work or more of the load. So key muscles that you want to try to target or facilitate would be more of your abdominals, also your glute muscles, which um, Nico and Pete have mentioned in other videos. But we're going to kind of show you just some easy warm-up exercises to help activate these muscles. So I'm going to have Xavier laying on the back right here, flat on the floor. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of like a level one exercise. Uh, essentially, we're just trying to train these muscles here, your lower abdominal muscles. These are kind of like a sling or back brace that wrap around your lower lumbar spine. And what you want to kind of picture is your tummy tightening down here and keeping your back flat onto the floor. So for level one, while Xavier's pressing down right here into the floor and squeezing, he's going to lift one leg up at a time, lift it to 90, tap the heel, and then alternate back and forth. And so this is called like level one marching while you're bracing. You can sometimes put a little towel on the lower back so that way you kind of feel like you're keeping the back smush against the floor, trying not to let the back lift and keeping this engaged here. So this one, you can go for about 30 seconds to a minute or repetitions, whatever feels easier. But as long as you're feeling your lower abdominals working, then you're in good shape. So the second level would be more of a 90-90. So same thing, you're bracing here, keeping the back nice and flat to the floor. And then you're going to just tap one heel at a time, like you're marching, same thing, bringing it back, and then alternating. Same thing, you're trying to keep that back nice and flat, keep the core engaged. Do you feel the core engaged? Mm -hmm. Good. And same thing, 30 seconds to a minute, it's a good goal. Okay. Now, the last level would be keeping the same position, but rather than tapping the heel, you're going to extend one leg and you're going to hover it just above the floor, above the table, not letting it touch, and then returning. So same thing, brace, alternate, hover, and then alternate legs. So this is a little more advanced. Again, once you master the first two levels, then you can progress to this level here. So ultimately, we're trying to train these muscles to kind of maintain the stability in our back while we're playing basketball so we're not overusing the back. <laughs>